What is the Proto-Renaissance? The Proto-Renaissance, essentially meaning pre-Renaissance, is a term art historians use to describe a change in the style of art towards the end of the Gothic period in which art begins to foreshadow the characteristics of the Renaissance in terms of naturalism, realism, and humanism. Different art history books will cite different date ranges for the Proto-Renaissance. But it is generally considered to begin during the end of the 12th century and end during the early 14th century in Italy. Work by artists such as the Lorenzetti brothers, Simone Martini, Duccio, Simabu, and Giotto represent key shifts in style from Gothic to Renaissance. Famous writers and poets of the age include the poet Petrarch, who wrote love sonnets that went on to influence Shakespeare. Another poet, Dante Alighieri, wrote The Divine Comedy, an epic tale of the author's descent into hell. What is the Proto-Renaissance? The Proto-Renaissance, essentially meaning pre-Renaissance, is a term art historians use to describe a change in the style of art towards the end of the Gothic period in which art begins to foreshadow the characteristics of the Renaissance in terms of naturalism, realism, and humanism. Different art history books will cite different date ranges for the Proto-Renaissance but it is generally considered to begin during the end of the 12th century and end during the early 14th century in Italy. Work by artists such as the Lorenzetti brothers, Simone Martini, Duccio, Simabu, and Giotto represent key shifts in style from Gothic to Renaissance. Famous writers and poets of the age include the poet Petrarch, who wrote love sonnets that went on to influence Shakespeare. Another poet, Dante Alighieri, wrote The Divine Comedy, an epic tale of the author's descent into hell. Who were key Proto-Renaissance painters in Siena? Thirteen and fourteenth century Siena, about 40 miles southwest of Florence, was a hotbed of late Gothic, pre-Renaissance art production. The art of Siena rivaled that of any other city of the age. One of the most important artists working in Siena, Duccio di Boninsegna, referred to simply as Duccio, is considered to be the father of Sienese painting. Duccio is known for the Maista altarpiece he made for the Siena Cathedral. Between 1308 and 1311, this piece is influenced by earlier Byzantine styles of art. The enormous altar piece, originally made up of over 50 panels, is dominated by red and gold colors and presents the Virgin Mary enthroned as the Queen of Heaven in the center panel. Her highly decorative throne opens up as if welcoming viewers into an embrace. A big change from the flatness of earlier Gothic and Byzantine images. Mary is surrounded by a sea of saints, each framed by the flat disc of a halo behind the head. 
the infant Christ, imagined as a small man, sits weightlessly in Mary's lap. Unfortunately, this beautiful example of Sienese art was dismantled in the 18th century and sold piece by piece to museums and private collections. Some remaining pieces have been reassembled and are on display in the Siena Cathedral. Who were key Proto-Renaissance painters in Siena? Thirteen and fourteenth century Siena, about forty miles southwest of Florence, was a hotbed of late Gothic, pre-Renaissance art production. The art of Siena rivaled that of any other city of the age. One of the most important artists working in Siena, Duccio di Boninsegna, referred to simply as Duccio, is considered to be the father of Sienese painting. Duccio is known for the Maista altarpiece he made for the Siena Cathedral. Between 1308 and 1311, this piece is influenced by earlier Byzantine styles of art. The enormous altarpiece, originally made up of over 50 panels, is dominated by red and gold colors and presents the Virgin Mary enthroned as the Queen of Heaven in the center panel. Her highly decorative throne opens up as if welcoming viewers into an embrace. A big change from the flatness of earlier Gothic and Byzantine images. Mary is surrounded by a sea of saints, each framed by the flat disc of a halo behind the head. The infant Christ, imagined as a small man, sits weightlessly in Mary's lap. Unfortunately, this beautiful example of Sienese art was dismantled in the 18th century and sold piece by piece to museums and private collections. Some remaining pieces have been reassembled and are on display in the Siena Cathedral. Who were the Lorenzetti brothers? The Lorenzetti brothers were Sienese painters who were influenced by the work of Duccio. The father of Sienese painting. Pietro, c.1280 c.1348, and Ambrogio, DC 1348, are known for their simple. Yet noble paintings and innovations in creating a sense of real space in their work. Ambrogio painted monumental frescoes depicting an allegory of both good and bad government in Siena's main civic building. The Palazzo Publico, in 1338. The allegory of good government in the city. Visually describes the benefits of a just government on its people by depicting an idealized Siena. The complex fresco, filled with beautiful, multicolored buildings and allegorical figures. Achieves a natural sense of scale between the figures and the environment. On a nearby wall in the palazzo, the allegory of bad government in the city shows. What can happen when a city loses its way, the personified figures of avarice, pride. And glory lurk above the head of a brutish ruler while the people of the city suffer. Who were the Lorenzetti brothers?
The Lorenzetti brothers were Sienese painters who were influenced by the work of Duccio. The father of Sienese painting Pietro, c.1280 c.1348, and Ambrogio, d.c. 1348, are known for their simple yet noble paintings and innovations in creating a sense of real space in their work. Ambrogio painted monumental frescoes depicting an allegory of both good and bad government in Siena's main civic building. The Palazzo Publico, in 1338. The allegory of good government in the city. Visually describes the benefits of a just government on its people by depicting an idealized Siena. The complex fresco, filled with beautiful, multicolored buildings and allegorical figures. Achieves a natural sense of scale between the figures and the environment. On a nearby wall in the palazzo, the allegory of bad government in the city shows. What can happen when a city loses its way, the personified figures of avarice, pride, and glory lurk above the head of a brutish ruler while the people of the city suffer. What is a fresco? A fresco is a wall painting made using the bone fresco. Technique of applying pigment to freshly mixed, wet plaster. The process results in durable, permanent images. Another technique, known as fresco secco, is a method of applying pigment to plaster that has already dried. This method results in more fragile images that can flake off over time. Fresco painting is usually done in areas with warm, dry weather ideal conditions for the bone fresco process. Italian cities such as Florence and Siena are well known for their frescoes. What is a fresco? A fresco is a wall painting made using the bone fresco. Technique of applying pigment to freshly mixed, wet plaster. The process results in durable, permanent images. Another technique, known as fresco secco, is a method of applying pigment to plaster that has already dried. This method results in more fragile images that can flake off over time. Fresco painting is usually done in areas with warm, dry weather ideal conditions for the bone fresco process. Italian cities such as Florence and Siena are well known for their frescoes. Who was Giorgio Vasari? Giorgio Vasari, 1511-1574, was a mediocre painter and a more successful architect. But his real legacy was the biographies he wrote about important Renaissance artists. Lives of the most eminent painters, sculptors, and architects, often referred to as lives of the artists. It is through Vasari that we are introduced to the early Renaissance artists Simabo and Giotto. 
and hear the details of disputes between Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. The book covers artists from Fra Angelico to Titian, Donatello to Salviati. Despite the book being filled with bias towards Italian artists, embellished stories, and historical inaccuracies. The impact his work had on art history and Renaissance scholarship cannot be ignored. Who was Giorgio Vasari? Giorgio Vasari, 1511-1574, was a mediocre painter and a more successful architect. But his real legacy was the biographies he wrote about important Renaissance artists. Lives of the most eminent painters, sculptors, and architects, often referred to as lives of the artists. It is through Vasari that we are introduced to the early Renaissance artists Simabo and Giotto. And here the details of disputes between Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. The book covers artists from Fra Angelico to Titian, Donatello to Salviati. Despite the book being filled with bias towards Italian artists, embellished stories, and historical inaccuracies. The impact his work had on art history and Renaissance scholarship cannot be ignored. Who was Cimabue? In the lives of the artists, Giorgio Vasari describes the 13th century. Artist Simabo as the man who shed the first light on the art of painting. He is credited with innovations in naturalism, his art bridges the gap between the flat Byzantine style of painting and the more realistically proportioned style associated with the Renaissance. Comparing the work of Simabo and his apprentice, Giotto, the difference is clear. Simabo's panel painting, Virgin, and Child Enthroned, c. 1280, depicts the Virgin Mary and infant Christ surrounded by saints. The work is a blend of Gothic, Byzantine, style and newer Renaissance techniques. The folds of the drapery worn by the Virgin Mary are defined by gold lines. The figures of the saints are elongated and thin. Infant Christ appears to have the proportions of an adult. Despite the flatness and the stylized forms, Simabo scene is warm and real. The figures are naturally proportioned and their faces are thoughtful engaging, and diverse. Giotto's painting of the same scene represents a major shift away from Gothic styles and towards more realistic images of figures and of three-dimensional space. The solid form of Mary's body can be seen through her heavy blue robes and the infant Christ sits firmly upon her lap. The figures in Giotto's Virgin and Child Enthroned are realistically modeled and Mary's throne appears to extend back into real space. Who was Chimabui? In the lives of the artists, Giorgio Vasari describes the 13th century. 
Artist Simabo as the man who shed the first light on the art of painting. He is credited with innovations in naturalism, his art bridges the gap between the flat Byzantine style of painting and the more realistically proportioned style associated with the Renaissance. Comparing the work of Simabo and his apprentice, Giotto, the difference is clear. Simabo's panel painting, Virgin, and Child Enthroned, c. 1280, depicts the Virgin Mary and Infant Christ surrounded by saints. The work is a blend of Gothic, Byzantine, style and newer Renaissance techniques. The folds of the drapery worn by the Virgin Mary are defined by gold lines. The figures of the saints are elongated and thin. Infant Christ appears to have the proportions of an adult. Despite the flatness and the stylized forms, Simabo scene is warm and real. The figures are naturally proportioned and their faces are thoughtful, engaging, and diverse. Giotto's painting of the same scene represents a major shift away from Gothic styles and towards more realistic images of figures and of three-dimensional space. The solid form of Mary's body can be seen through her heavy blue robes and the infant Christ sits firmly upon her lap. The figures in Giotto's Virgin and Child enthroned are realistically modeled and Mary's throne appears to extend back into real space. How did Giotto become so famous? Giotto was a 13th century celebrity. Discovered by master artist Simaba drawing sheep while tending to his flock. As the story goes, he eventually achieved star power not seen by any artist before him. He was written about by Giorgio Vasari, discussed at length by the artist writer, Senino Senini, and mentioned by Leonardo da Vinci as one of the most important artists who came before him. Vasari explained what made Giotto famous, he set art upon the path that may be called the true one. As quoted in Stockstad, Art History, p. 608. Vasari went on to explain that it was Giotto who made the biggest visual breakthroughs in depicting a realistic sense of three-dimensional space in his painting. Giotto's masterpiece is the fresco series he painted inside the Arena Chapel in Padua, Italy. Made for the Scrovengi family and completed around 1305, the frescoes cover the barrel vaulted chapel walls in deep lapis blue and are dotted with stars and discs featuring the portraits of saints. Giotto paints a narrative by dividing the wall up into quadrants, each telling a different part of the story of the life of Christ and the Virgin Mary. Each scene has a sense of depth and the figures are realistically modeled by using dark shades for shadow, and whiter shades for highlights. The largest fresco in the series is The Last Judgment, at the west wall of the chapel. In The Last Judgment, Christ raises his hand in blessing. The saved are grouped on Christ's right side and the damned descend to hell on the left. The patron, Enrico Scrovengi is shown offering his family chapel to Christ in an attempt to cleanse his sins. 
The Renaissance artist Lorenzo Ghiberti said the Arena Chapel was one of the glories of the earth. Quoted in Art Past Art Present 241 How did Giotto become so famous? Giotto was a 13th century celebrity. Discovered by master artist Simaba drawing sheep while tending to his flock. As the story goes, he eventually achieved star power not seen by any artist before him. He was written about by Giorgio Vasari, discussed at length by the artist writer, Senino Senini, and mentioned by Leonardo da Vinci as one of the most important artists who came before him. Vasari explained what made Giotto famous, he set art upon the path that may be called the true one. As quoted in Stockstad, Art History, p. 608. Vasari went on to explain that it was Giotto who made the biggest visual breakthroughs in depicting a realistic sense of three-dimensional space in his painting. Giotto's masterpiece is the fresco series he painted inside the Arena Chapel in Padua, Italy. Made for the Scrovengi family and completed around 1305, the frescoes cover the barrel vaulted chapel walls in deep lapis blue and are dotted with stars and discs featuring the portraits of saints. Giotto paints a narrative by dividing the wall up into quadrants, each telling a different part of the story of the life of Christ and the Virgin Mary. Each scene has a sense of depth and the figures are realistically modeled by using dark shades for shadow, and whiter shades for highlights. The largest fresco in the series is The Last Judgment, at the west wall of the chapel. In The Last Judgment, Christ raises his hand in blessing. The saved are grouped on Christ's right side and the damned descend to hell on the left. The patron, Enrico Scrovengi is shown offering his family chapel to Christ in an attempt to cleanse his sins. The Renaissance artist Lorenzo Ghiberti said the Arena Chapel was one of the glories of the earth. Quoted in Art Past Art Present 241 Why was Florence an important Renaissance city? The Renaissance is said to have begun in Florence in the 15th century. A period known as the Quattro Centro. At this time, Florence was not just a city, but a city-state, much like the city-states of ancient Greece. 15th century Florence was also a republic with a constitution. Though it was a far cry from a democracy. Florence was an economic powerhouse with a lot of civic pride. Money was pumped into civic projects such as cathedral building, architectural decoration and artist competitions, all in an attempt to beautify the city and enjoy the pleasures of wealth. Florentine patrons supported the careers of important artists such as Masixio, Donatello, and Ghiberti, whose innovative work kick-started the Renaissance. Why was Florence an important Renaissance city?
the Renaissance is said to have begun in Florence in the 15th century. A period known as the Quattro Centro. At this time, Florence was not just a city, but a city-state, much like the city-states of ancient Greece. 15th century Florence was also a republic with a constitution. Though it was a far cry from a democracy. Florence was an economic powerhouse with a lot of civic pride. Money was pumped into civic projects such as cathedral building, architectural decoration, and artist competitions, all in an attempt to beautify the city and enjoy the pleasures of wealth. Florentine patrons supported the careers of important artists such as Masiccio, Donatello, and Ghiberti, whose innovative work kick-started the Renaissance. Why was Florence an important Renaissance city? The Renaissance is said to have begun in Florence in the 15th century. A period known as the Quattro Centro. At this time, Florence was not just a city, but a city-state, much like the city-states of ancient Greece. 15th century Florence was also a republic with a constitution. Though it was a far cry from a democracy. Florence was an economic powerhouse with a lot of civic pride. Money was pumped into civic projects such as cathedral building, architectural decoration, and artist competitions, all in an attempt to beautify the city and enjoy the pleasures of wealth. Florentine patrons supported the careers of important artists such as Masiccio, Donatello, and Ghiberti, whose innovative work kick-started the Renaissance. What is Angkor Wat? Angkor Wat is an enormous Hindu temple complex in Cambodia featuring a series of walled courtyards leading to a group of central towers. Built over 30 years by the Khmer King Suryavarman II during the first half of the 12th century. Angkor Wat's five lotus-shaped towers each symbolize peaks of Mount Meru. A mountain considered sacred in Hindu, Jain, and Buddhist traditions. The central tower is approximately 200 feet tall and the entire complex is aligned with the sun. So that on the summer solstice, the sun rises up directly over the central tower when viewed from the western gate. Suryavarman II's goal was to associate himself with the god Vishnu and the entire temple. Complex is covered in miles of relief carvings depicting the king and the many avatars of Vishnu. What are the main characteristics of Romanesque architecture? Romanesque architecture is notable for its use of round arches, military strength, and exterior architectural sculpture, the latter having fallen out of favor in Europe during earlier centuries. Romanesque buildings rely on thick walls, barrel vaults, 
and strong piers for structural support, allowing room for relatively small windows. As Europe was a culturally and politically fragmented landscape during the medieval period, Romanesque architectural styles vary greatly depending on the geographic region. For example, at first glance the church of Saint Cernan in Toulouse, France might not look much like the Pisa Cathedral in Italy but these 11th century examples are both considered Romanesque due to their use of round arches. Thick walls, cruciform structure, and exterior sculptural detail. What is the Gero Crucifix? The Gero Crucifix is a life-size sculpture depicting the body of Christ on the cross. Made of gilded and painted wood and meant to be suspended above an altar. The back of Christ's head was hollowed in order to hold communion bread used in the ritual. Of the Eucharist. As opposed to the triumphant pose of Christ as seen on the book cover of the Lindau Gospels. This representation of Christ emphasizes suffering. Christ's head hangs heavily and his body appears limp and frail. This is the first time in history that an image of dead Christ was depicted on the cross. What is the Cliff Palace at Mesa Verde? The Cliff Palace at Mesa Verde in Colorado was built by the Anasazi people who lived in the Four Corners area of the American Southwest for thousands of years and are considered ancestors of the Pueblo people. Before the 14th century, the area was less arid and a slightly cooler than it is now and the Anasazi lived by irrigating the land for farming. They built dwellings in natural cliff alcoves, directly underneath the land they farmed. The dwellings, which are among the most dramatic and best preserved examples of Native American architecture, were designed for special purposes such as food storage and religious ritual. Some of the dwellings have as many as 150 rooms and are essentially cave villages. Another structure, Pueblo Benito, was also built by ancestral Pueblo people as early as the 9th century. What are the main characteristics of Ottonian architecture? The Ottonian rulers emphasized their imperial strength and military prowess. Through the construction of monumental architecture reminiscent of ancient Rome. Churches of the period followed the basilica plan and featured wooden roofs, many of which burned down. The Church of St. Syriacus in Jern Road, Germany, begun in 961 is one of the best surviving examples of Ottonian architecture. The church architects placed a newfound focus on verticality, which foreshadowed the leaping heights of much later medieval buildings. The church of St. Syriacus features a second floor gallery, clear story windows and a west workay wall along the west end 74 of the nave, one of the key features of Ottonian church architecture.
What is the hours of Jean Dievru? The Hours of Jean D'Avros is a 14th century book of hours illuminated by an artist. Named Jean Pucelle and was a gift from French King Charles IV to his third wife, Jean D'Avros. The book may be tiny in terms of physical dimension. Only a few inches, in fact, but is big in terms of artistic innovation. It is known for its grisale illustrations which feature a grey monochrome style that results in unique, sculpturesque figures. The illuminations, which often incorporate examples of Gothic architecture into the background, are innovatively rendered using spatial recession, creating a sense of depth not seen in earlier medieval painting. What is a book of hours? A book of hours is a private prayer book, which became popular in the 13th and 14th centuries as literacy levels among the European nobility increased. The books included specific prayers to be recited at certain times or hours, of the day and night, and were often devoted to the Virgin Mary. A book of hours was a valuable object, and owning one was a sign of wealth. One of the most masterfully decorated books of hours from the 14th century is the hours of Jean D'Avrouz. What was the Aztec religion? The Aztec religion was influenced by the beliefs and mythologies of other Mesoamerican cultures such as the Almec, Maya, Teotihuacan, and Toltec. As in other Mesoamerican religions, human sacrifice was an important part of the religion and was linked to cycles of birth, death, and rebirth. The Aztec emphasized the importance of the sun as well as over 1,000 powerful yet occasionally fallible deities. Huitzilopochtli was the god of war and the sun who, according to mythology, led the Aztecs to the location where they founded the city of Tenochtitlan. One of the most popular deities was the heroic Quetzalcoatl, who was often depicted in art as a feathered serpent. Religion was an extremely important part of everyday life for the Aztecs. What were the major art traditions of the woodland period? The two dominant art traditions of the woodland period were the art of the Adena culture and the Hopewell. These cultures shared a number of visual motifs and symbols and greatly influenced the art of other native North American cultures across the continent. Both the Adena and the Hopewell were known for building large-scale earthworks as well as smaller pieces of sculpture and jewelry. Often made from copper, or cut from mica, a layered silicate mineral. Because of the plundering of sites and an overall lack of documentation, 
a great deal remains unknown about the art traditions of the Adena and Hopewell. Who were the Lorenzetti brothers? The Lorenzetti brothers were Sienese painters who were influenced by the work of Duccio. The father of Sienese painting. Pietro, c.1280 c.1348, and Ambrogio, dc1348, are known for their simple. Yet noble paintings and innovations in creating a sense of real space in their work. Ambrogio painted monumental frescoes depicting an allegory of both good and bad government in Siena's main civic building. The Palazzo Publico, in 1338. The allegory of good government in the city. Visually describes the benefits of a just government on its people by depicting an idealized Siena. The complex fresco, filled with beautiful, multicolored buildings and allegorical figures. Achieves a natural sense of scale between the figures and the environment. On a nearby wall in the palazzo, the allegory of bad government in the city shows. What can happen when a city loses its way, the personified figures of avarice, pride and glory lurk above the head of a brutish ruler while the people of the city suffer. Why is the cover of the Lindau Gospel so luxurious? This astonishing book cover, decorated with pearls, sapphires, emeralds, garnet and gold, was not originally intended for the 9th century Lindau Gospels. Though it has been associated with this manuscript since before the 16th century. The book cover was made at a monastic workshop during the reign of Charles the Bald. Charlemagne's grandson, who ruled from 840 to 877, and represents Christ on the cross. Christ is surrounded by mourning figures, but stands erect with his palms forward, and stares powerfully ahead. The work was made in a style known as repoussé. Which means the figures were hammered into low relief from the back of the metal cover. The fine gold reflects glittering light, and the jewels evoke heavenly Jerusalem. The obvious luxury of the cover indicates the inherent value of books during the medieval period. And the richness of the materials emphasize the triumph of Christ, foreshadowing the resurrection. What is the Gupta style? Associated with art produced during the reign of Gupta rulers, who ruled in eastern India from c. 320 to 450 CE, the Gupta style is characterized by naturalistic. Though idealized, images of the Buddha and Bodhisattvas in both painting and sculpture. A great example of the Gupta style is the wall painting of the Bodhisattva known as the beautiful Padmapani, painted in the late 5th century. Padmapani is shown as serene and relaxed, withdrawn from the material world swirling around him. 
strong outlines emphasize the form of the figure. But the rest of the body is smooth and anatomically undefined. With downcast eyes, the painting exhibits the Gupta emphasis on naturalism. Balance, and spiritual detachment. What is a Psalter? A Psalter is a book containing the text of the Book of Psalms from the Old Testament. The most famous Carolingian Psalter is the Utrecht Psalter, known for its lively ink drawings. The manuscript was produced at the Imperial Scriptorium in Reims. In modern-day France, in the first half of the 9th century. The illustrations of the Utrecht Psalter incorporate architectural and landscape scenes. And the text features Roman-style majuscules. As Psalms are not narrative, they are challenging to illustrate. The artists who created the Utrecht Psalter illustrated them. By expressively visualizing specific phrases from the text. What was impressive about the doors of Bishop Byrne Ward? The splendidly designed bronze doors of Bishop Byrne Ward were built for the Abbey Church of St. Michael's in Hildesheim, Germany. The doors themselves are enormous over 16 feet tall and are the first example of monumental bronze sculpture made by the lost wax process since antiquity. Each door was made as one piece a remarkable technical feat. Considering the complex relief sculpture covering each door. Notable for their masterful metal work, the doors are also impressive due to their complex narrative imagery which outlines both Old and New Testament events. Each door is divided into eight panels, each representing a specific biblical scene. A design likely inspired from manuscript illumination. Who was Chimabui? In the lives of the artists, Giorgio Vasari describes the 13th century. Artist Simabo as the man who shed the first light on the art of painting. He is credited with innovations in naturalism, his art bridges the gap between the flat Byzantine style of painting and the more realistically proportioned style associated with the Renaissance. Comparing the work of Simabo and his apprentice, Giotto, the difference is clear. Simabo's panel painting, Virgin and Child Enthroned, c. 1280, depicts the Virgin Mary and infant Christ surrounded by saints. The work is a blend of Gothic, Byzantine, style and newer Renaissance techniques. The folds of the drapery worn by the Virgin Mary are defined by gold lines. The figures of the saints are elongated and thin. Infant Christ appears to have the proportions of an adult. Despite the flatness and the stylized forms, Simabo's scene is warm and real. The figures are naturally proportioned and their faces are thoughtful engaging, and diverse. 
Giotto's painting of the same scene represents a major shift away from Gothic styles and towards more realistic images of figures and of three-dimensional space. The solid form of Mary's body can be seen through her heavy blue robes and the infant Christ sits firmly upon her lap. The figures in Giotto's Virgin and Child enthroned are realistically modeled and Mary's throne appears to extend back into real space. What is Hunter's mural? Hunter's Mural is a name given to petroglyphs located in Nine Mile Canyon in Utah. The petroglyphs are an example of rock art, in ancient Greek. Petros means rock and glyph means writing or drawing, attributed to the Fremont culture of the American. Southwest Hunter's Mural depicts a bow hunter aiming his weapon at a flock of bighorn sheep. The Fremont used a unique method to create these Rock 92 images. The canyon walls were naturally stained a dark brown by bacteria. The Fremont scraped this brown varnish away to reveal a lighter shade of rock underneath and form a picture. Petroglyphs similar to Hunter's mural can be found across the American West and Southwest. Some American rock art is thought to date from as early as 7000 BCE. What is Romanesque art? Although the term itself was not used until the 19th century. Romanesque means Roman-like and is used to describe 11th through 12th century medieval art and architecture featuring Roman characteristics. The Romanesque period saw a revival in monumental architecture, sculpture, and wall painting. What is Medieval Expressionism? Medieval Expressionism was a style that emphasized the communication of feeling and emotion. The page with St. Matthew from the Gospel Book of Ebo, illustrates a scene in which St. Matthew sits at his desk frantically writing, his face twisted with intense emotion. St. Matthew's robe, hair, and the sharply bending grasses in the background are made up of repeated linear flourishes. It seems as though Matthew, hunched over and sporting triangular eyebrows, Fears divine inspiration will be lost if he does not immediately write down his evangelical text. This manuscript painting, done in gold and colored ink on vellum in the 9th century, is an example of medieval expressionism. The whole scene seems to be blowing in the wind, and the dramatic quality of the work expresses an emotional rather than purely intellectual element of the Gospels. What is the Pyramid of the Sun? The Pyramid of the Sun is an Aztec site from pre-classical Mexico. Located in Teotihuacan, near modern-day Mexico City. 
With a population of 200,000 people, the city of Teotihuacan reached its peak. Between 350 and 650 CE similar in size to the Great Pyramid at Giza in Egypt. The Pyramid of the Sun was the most important architectural monument in the city. Aligned with the Avenue of the Dead. The structure was over 200 feet high and 720 feet on each side at the base. Made up of a series of steps, a stairway led to the top where a temple used to sit. The exterior of the building would have been painted and faced a smaller temple called the Pyramid of the Moon. What was Cahokia? Cahokia was the largest pre-Columbian city in what is now the United States, and peaked in size with a population of nearly 25. 000 between the years 800 and 1500 bigger than the city of London at the time. Like the Great Serpent Mound, Cahokia was built by the Mississippian people and featured numerous earthen mounds the result of a huge labor effort. There were around 120 mounds at Cahokia, the largest, known as Monk's Mound. Was 100 feet tall, aligned to the sun. And possibly used as some kind of astronomical observatory in a manner similar to Stonehenge. Evidence of the city can be seen in southern Illinois. Who was Giorgio Vasari? Giorgio Vasari 1511 to 1574, was a mediocre painter and a more successful architect. But his real legacy was the biographies he wrote about important Renaissance artists. Lives of the most eminent painters, sculptors, and architects, often referred to as lives of the artists. It is through Vasari that we are introduced to the early Renaissance artists Simabo and Giotto. And here the details of disputes between Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo. The book covers artists from Fra Angelico to Titian, Donatello to Salviati. Despite the book being filled with bias towards Italian artists, embellished stories, and historical inaccuracies. The impact his work had on art history and Renaissance scholarship cannot be ignored. What does a Hindu temple look like? Hindu temples are one of the primary examples of Hindu architecture in India and Southeast Asia. They are usually built of cut rock, and although there is a great deal of stylistic diversity, are generally placed within two categories, Northern and Southern style. Hindu temples are raised on a podium, somewhat like an Etruscan temple, called a plinth. Temples in the northern style feature a large tower in the shape of a beehive. Called Shikhara, which means mountain peak. Atop the tower is a rounded form known as an amulika because of the similarly shaped umla fruit. 
these amalekas are used to decorate lower portions of the shikhara as well. The halls of a northern style temple have a series of halls called mandapas, which lead to the garbhagriha, an inner sanctuary used to house a sacred image. The halls are themselves decorated with smaller, tower like roofs. An example of a northern style Hindu temple is the Kandarya Mahadeva temple in Kajuraho, India which was built around 1000 CE southern style Hindu temples feature a pyramid-like tiered tower called a vimana, and this is topped with a round capstone. The halls of a southern style temple also lead to an inner chamber, but have flat roofs and pillared mandapas. An example of a southern style Hindu temple is the Rajarajvara temple in Tanjavur, India, which was built around 1010 CE. How is pre Columbian art in North America organized? In North America, pre-Columbian art is divided into three major periods, Archaic period, ends in c. 1000 BCE Woodland period, c. 300 B. C. E. 1000 CE Mississippian period, c. 900-1500 CE. Why is the Leaning Tower of Pisa well, leaning? The Leaning Tower of Pisa, or Campanile, Italian for Bell Tower, is part of a larger cathedral complex uniformly designed in white marble. The tower, built between 1171 and 1271, started to lean even before construction. Was completed because of the soft ground upon which it was built. And because the base was too small for the nearly 180 foot height of the tower. The builders tried to adapt to the lean during construction and a slight bend is noticeable in the upper floors. This did not work. In the last few decades, structural engineers have excavated underneath the tower in order to stabilize it. Who were key proto-Renaissance painters in Siena? Thirteen and fourteenth century Siena, about forty miles southwest of Florence, was a hotbed of late Gothic, pre Renaissance art production. The art of Siena rivaled that of any other city of the age. One of the most important artists working in Siena, Duccio di Boninsegna, referred to simply as Duccio is considered to be the father of Sienese painting. Duccio is known for the Maista altarpiece he made for the Siena Cathedral. Between 1308 and 1311, this piece is influenced by earlier Byzantine styles of art. The enormous altarpiece, originally made up of over 50 panels, is dominated by red and gold colors and presents the Virgin Mary enthroned as the Queen of Heaven in the center panel. Her highly decorative throne opens up as if welcoming viewers into an embrace. 
a big change from the flatness of earlier Gothic and Byzantine images. Mary is surrounded by a sea of saints, each framed by the flat disc of a halo behind the head. The infant Christ, imagined as a small man, sits weightlessly in Mary's lap. Unfortunately, this beautiful example of Sienese art was dismantled in the 18th century and sold piece by piece to museums and private collections. Some remaining pieces have been reassembled and are on display in the Siena Cathedral. What is the God's Cal Gospel Lectionary? The God's Calc Gospel Lectionary was one of the first Carolingian illuminated manuscripts to use the New Caroline script. And was named for a scribe who signed his name in the book. Produced at the court scriptorium at Aachen, it was meant to be read aloud. And commemorated the 781 baptism of Charlemagne's son. The God's Calc Gospel Lectionary is notable for its artistic naturalism and incorporation of ancient Roman styles. The luxurious manuscript, with gold and silver lettering, and extensive use of the color purple. One of the most expensive pigments, served as an artistic inspiration and a model for later gospel books. What is stained glass? Stained glass is translucent colored glass set in a lead framework, and usually used in windows. Stained glass was used in early Christian and Byzantine churches as well. But was particularly favored by Gothic architects for whom it began an important form of art. The process of making stained glass hasn't changed much in nearly a thousand years. The colors in the glass come from adding metal oxides to molten glass, a labor intensive process. Detailed images are made by using black enamel paint and fusing it to the glass through firing. The glass artist then organizes the colored glass fragments on a flat surface. Like an enormous puzzle, until reaching the desired image. And then joins the glass to lead strips and iron bands, which support the heavy glass. How did Giotto become so famous? Giotto was a 13th century celebrity. Discovered by master artist Simaba drawing sheep while tending to his flock. As the story goes, he eventually achieved star power not seen by any artist before him. He was written about by Giorgio Vasari, discussed at length by the artist writer, Senino Senini, and mentioned by Leonardo da Vinci as one of the most important artists who came before him. Vasari explained what made Giotto famous, he set art upon the path that may be called the true one. As quoted in Stockstad, Art History, p. 608. Vasari went on to explain that it was Giotto who made the biggest visual breakthroughs in depicting a realistic sense of three-dimensional space in his painting. 
Giotto's masterpiece is the fresco series he painted inside the Arena Chapel in Padua, Italy. Made for the Scrovengi family and completed around 1305, the frescoes cover the barrel vaulted chapel walls in deep lapis blue. And are dotted with stars and discs featuring the portraits of saints. Giotto paints a narrative by dividing the wall up into quadrants. Each telling a different part of the story of the life of Christ and the Virgin Mary. Each scene has a sense of depth and the figures are realistically modeled by using dark shades for shadow, and whiter shades for highlights. The largest fresco in the series is The Last Judgment, at the west wall of the chapel. In The Last Judgment, Christ raises his hand in blessing. The saved are grouped on Christ's right side and the damned descend to hell on the left. The patron, Enrico Scrovengi, is shown offering his family chapel to Christ in an attempt to cleanse his sins. The Renaissance artist Lorenzo Ghiberti said the Arena Chapel was one of the glories of the earth. Quoted in Art Past Art Present 241 What is the connection between Romanesque art and pilgrimages? During the 11th and 12th centuries, religious pilgrimages across Europe were extremely popular. On journeys that could last over a year, pilgrims walked along established pilgrimage routes, visiting important churches and religious sites. One of the most famous pilgrimage routes connected Paris with Santiago de Compostela in Spain. Nearly 1,000 miles away, Pilgrimage churches, such as St. James Cathedral in Santiago de Compostela, were specifically designed to accommodate large groups of visitors. Additional aisle transepts, ambulatories, and radiating chapels were designed to aid the flow of pilgrim traffic, as well as ensure enough space for church officials to do their work. The doors of St. James were always open for visitors exhausted after a long journey. What is the Renaissance? The word Renaissance is a French word meaning rebirth. The Renaissance is generally considered to be a rebirth of classical, Greco-Roman, culture, which resurfaced after the dark days following the fall of the Roman Empire in the 4th century. This, however, is an oversimplification. Changes such as the development of cities, a growing European economy, and strong support for the arts by wealthy patrons all contributed to the birth of the Renaissance. The balanced, harmonious, and naturalistic paintings associated with the Renaissance did not burst onto the art and culture scene of Europe overnight. It happened slowly over the course of the 14th and 15th centuries beginning in Florence, Italy, and was at least partly inspired by a newfound interest in translating classical Greek manuscripts, and the study of Roman ruins. What is a fresco?
A fresco is a wall painting made using the bone fresco. Technique of applying pigment to freshly mixed, wet plaster. The process results in durable, permanent images. Another technique, known as fresco seco, is a method of applying pigment to plaster that has already dried. This method results in more fragile images that can flake off over time. Fresco painting is usually done in areas with warm, dry weather ideal conditions for the bone fresco process. Italian cities such as Florence and Siena are well known for their frescoes. What is Autonian art? Autonian art is a term that refers to the art and architecture produced under a new powerful dynasty that established itself in the eastern portion of the Holy Roman Empire after the power of the Carolingian dynasty had faded. Three main rulers, Otto I, Otto II, and Otto III ruled from 919 to 1002 and were based in modern-day Germany. During the Ottonian period, the arts flourished and new innovations in architecture, metalwork, and ivory carving were key elements in the so-called Ottonian Renaissance. What does Jane art look like? Jainism is an important religion in India, in addition to Hinduism. Though only a small percentage of Indians are Jainists. Jainists believe in the cycle of death and rebirth, called samsara, and attempt to live pure. Ascetic lives by looking inwards, avoiding material possessions, and acting kindly to others. At first glance, it may be difficult to distinguish Jain art from Buddhist and Hindu art. But one of the key types of Jain art is monumental nudes of meditating warriors, known as Jinas. The ascetic Gamata in Karnataka, India, is an example of this. At around 60 feet tall, this 10th century, colossal sculpture represents Gamata, who was famous for meditating for years without stopping. The figure of Gamata stands at attention with poised shoulders, confident chin, and stoic face. The sculpture's nudity, along with images of tree branches and creepers that curl around his limbs, are meant to emphasize the genus focus on spiritual, rather than material needs. Sculpture such as the, the ascetic Gamata is used to aid Jainists in their own meditations. What is the Proto-Renaissance? The Proto-Renaissance, essentially meaning pre-Renaissance, is a term art historians use to describe a change in the style of art towards the end of the Gothic period in which art begins to foreshadow the characteristics of the Renaissance in terms of naturalism, realism, and humanism. Different art history books will cite different date ranges for the Proto-Renaissance. But it is generally considered to begin during the end of 
the 12th century and end during the early 14th century in Italy. Work by artists such as the Lorenzetti brothers, Simone Martini, Duccio, Cimabue, and Giotto represent key shifts in style from Gothic to Renaissance. Famous writers and poets of the age include the poet Petrarch, who wrote love sonnets that went on to influence Shakespeare. Another poet, Dante Alighieri, wrote The Divine Comedy, an epic tale of the author's descent into hell. What is the Great Serpent Mound? The Great Serpent Mound is a curvilinear burial mound in the shape of a curling snake located in the southern portion of Ohio. This monumental earthwork is nearly a quarter of a mile long and is still clearly visible. The Great Serpent Mound was at first attributed to the Adena culture, which flourished in the early woodland period. C300B.C.E-1000 CE, and was known for building monumental mounds used for burial. The site is now thought to be the work of the slightly later Mississippian culture and has been dated to around 1070 CE serpentine forms appear on other types of Mississippian art. And serpents, as in many other cultures, were associated with fertility and harvest. Some scholars, however, believe that the shape of the Great Serpent Mound mirrors the path of Halley's Comet which was visible in the year 1066, the Bayou Tapestry also records this event. What is humanism? Though the term humanism wasn't invented until the 19th century. It refers to the rejection of medieval scholastic values and the new embrace of classical thought during the Renaissance. Humanism is also a way of thinking, an important part of humanist philosophy was. Education that focused on studying history, and emphasized personal ethics and civic values. Renaissance humanism resulted in a new emphasis on individuality. During the medieval period, art and literature tended to be viewed through a divine lens. From the perspective of God. During the Renaissance, by contrast, artists tended to take on a more human-centered view of the world. What is humanism? Though the term humanism wasn't invented until the 19th century. It refers to the rejection of medieval scholastic values and the new embrace of classical thought during the Renaissance. Humanism is also a way of thinking, an important part of humanist philosophy was education that focused on studying history and emphasized personal ethics and civic values. Renaissance humanism resulted in a new emphasis on individuality. During the medieval period, art and literature tended to be viewed through a divine lens. From the perspective of God, during the Renaissance, by contrast, artists tended to take on a more human-centered view of the world.
How was single point perspective invented? Quite literally a renaissance man, Filippo Bruno Lesci was a goldsmith. Clockmaker, mathematician, Latin scholar, and architect. It just so happens that he also invented single point perspective. One of the most important technical innovations of the Renaissance. Also known as linear perspective. Single point perspective is a mathematical system based on natural observation. Under the rules of single point perspective, distant objects are depicted smaller than objects closer to the viewer. While the far edges of similarly shaped objects appear shorter near the edges. This warping of forms is known as foreshortening. Bruno Lesci invented the idea of a picture plane, in which he imagined the frame of a painting as a window through which the viewer sees an illusion of three-dimensional space. The artist lays out the scene according to a grid pattern, and every object in the picture. For example architectural objects like roof lines and walls, follow invisible lines called orthogonals. Which converge at a single point, known as the vanishing point, usually at eye level to the viewer. Strangely enough, Bruno Lesci was primarily interested in perspective not as a painter, but as an architect. His goal was to design an interior that drew a person's attention through a space, such as a church nave. Towards the altar, which he did effectively in his design for the Santo Spirito in Florence in 1434. How was single point perspective invented? Quite literally, a Renaissance man. Filippo Bruno Lesci was a goldsmith, clockmaker, mathematician, Latin scholar, and architect. It just so happens that he also invented single point perspective. One of the most important technical innovations of the Renaissance. Also known as linear perspective. Single point perspective is a mathematical system based on natural observation. Under the rules of single point perspective, distant objects are depicted smaller than objects closer to the viewer. While the far edges of similarly shaped objects appear shorter near the edges. This warping of forms is known as foreshortening. Bruno Lesci invented the idea of a picture plane, in which he imagined the frame of a painting as a window through which the viewer sees an illusion of three-dimensional space. The artist lays out the scene according to a grid pattern, and every object in the picture. For example architectural objects like roof lines and walls, follow invisible lines called orthogonals which converge at a single point, known as the vanishing point, usually at eye level to the viewer. Strangely enough, Bruno Lesci was primarily interested in perspective not as a painter, but as an architect. His goal was to design an interior that drew a person's attention through a space, such as a church nave. Towards the altar, which he did effectively in his design for the Santo Spirito in Florence in 1434.